Welcome to the Clarinet Podcast, the show about all that's new and neat with clarinet, with the neatest people in the industry. You can support the ongoing production of this independently produced program by donating to our Patreon at clarinet.com support. Supporters get early access to extended ad-free podcasts and exclusive access to patron-only episodes and live events. And now for today's Christmas special of the Clarinet Podcast with special guest, Santa Claus. Believe it or not, I do play clarinet, and I prefer to use candy cane reeds because of their delicious flavor. They remind me of Christmas Eve all year round. Well, I finally managed to get Santa Claus himself on the podcast. I was shocked to find a message in my email inbox last week from one of his elves that said that he finally had the time to speak with me. I got him on the show here, and I was surprised to learn that not only does he actually play clarinet, but he's actually very knowledgeable about the instrument. I was I was quite surprised to see this. I guess he's got a lot of spare time to practice up there between Christmases, and the elves do do most of his gift building, to be fair. He shares some great information on how to get on his nice list and also gives some insight into what you might be receiving if you were a rather naughty clarinet player this year. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a Merry Christmas and thank you so much for listening to the Clarinet Podcast. Today's episode was brought to you by the generous support of the following sponsors. Dario Woodwinds has an exciting new weekly trivia show called Don't Blow It. You can check it out every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on their Instagram channel. And if you know the right answers to the questions, you might even have the chance to win some amazing new gear. By the way, if you haven't had a chance to try D'Addario's new reserve clarinet reeds, you're in for a real treat. They're using some really amazing new technology and manufacturing techniques that are helping achieve super consistent results. You can pick up a box at your local music store or head to clarinet.com reeds to buy a box right now. Chamber Music Northwest is hosting an international clarinet celebration and competition from June 24th to 30th in Portland, Oregon. You can compete to win over $20,000 in prizes in the Young Artist Competition, take part in clarinet ensembles, master classes, and clarinet mentor amateur workshops, and enjoy concerts by world-class artists, including Karata Giuffredi and Jose Frank Biester. Deadline for the Young Artist Competition is January 15th, and clarinetists age 30 or younger may apply. Passes to the clarinet celebration are on sale now, and you can learn more at cmnw.org. I'm here today with Santa S. Claus. Thank you so much, Santa, for taking the time to come on the podcast. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas to all clarinetists all around the world. Well, Santa, I'm just absolutely amazed that you had time to talk to me today between all the gifts that you must be making. But uh, And I definitely want to thank your elves for taking the time to set up this interview today. Well, you know, actually, the elves do most of the building of the gifts before Christmas. I tend to save up my energy for Christmas Eve when I go and deliver all the gifts to clarinetists all over the world. That's amazing. So they're actually doing most of the gifts. Do you find any time to practice? Do you play clarinet? Believe it or not, I do play clarinet, and I prefer to use candy cane reeds because of their delicious flavor. They remind me of Christmas Eve all year round. Candy cane? Do they grow that at the North Pole? Yes, it's a very specific type of cane exclusively for North Pole clarinets. How do you deal with the potential of cracking up there at the North Pole? It seems like it'd be a problem. Well, just like nobody who was recently on your podcast, I actually use a solid silver clarinet that completely eliminates the risk of cracking. Throw a good candy cane reed on there, and I can play a Christmas carol in the middle of July with no problem at all. So, Santa, you make a point of going around to good little girls and boys who play clarinet and even bigger adults who play clarinet every single year and putting some great things in their stockings. So, what are the hottest items that are heading into clarinetist stockings this year? Well, you know, most people don't live at the North Pole and play a solid silver clarinet. So, one of the biggest gifts that I like to add is the D'Addario Humidipacks. You uh, can put them in the case and they keep the humidity constant so that most wooden clarinets won't have any problems with cracking. And if you get the guitar version, they actually come in a really cool black bag that looks nice inside your clarinet case. That product's going to keep your clarinet at a nice and healthy 49% all year round, even in the driest months of winter. That's amazing. Can those be found at your local music store? You know what, Sean? I'm going to send you links to all these products that you can put in the show notes on your website today. Would that be okay? Yeah, that sounds fine to me. So uh, you can check out the show notes at clarinet.com slash 102 for today's episode. And I'll put all of Santa's recommendations into a list there that you can check out. What's something else that every single clarinetist should have in their clarinet stocking? 
Well, you know, something that's really cheap and really small and can fit inside even the smallest of stockings is mouthpiece patches, and you can never have enough of those. Why might Clannadis want to use mouthpiece patches, Santa? Well, you know, it's one of those things where you want to protect the mouthpiece that you've invested in. A lot of students get a really, really good mouthpiece, and then what ends up happening is they get teeth marks on the top, and that's no fun at all. Yeah, I've actually seen students who have managed to almost bite through the entire top of the mouthpiece. And one of the things I like to explain to them is that, you know, when you do invest in a really good mouthpiece, you're going to want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Are there any other benefits to using mouthpiece patches? Well, of course, up at the North Pole, if you're using a metal mouthpiece, you might stick to the mouthpiece. So I guess that's one other benefit. Okay, okay. But what about for other musicians who don't live at the North Pole? One other thing that they can help with is so that you don't feel the vibrations as much on your teeth. I think they're also especially valuable for marching band musicians because the clarinet mouthpiece won't slip around in your mouth when you're moving. I find that many players actually prefer to play with the mouthpiece patch and almost don't like to play at all without one. Yeah, you know, that definitely includes me. I, uh, I always joke that if I didn't have a mouthpiece patch, I wouldn't really play at all. <laughs> so um, what about keeping the clarinet safe from, you know, I assume that the, the reindeer will be coming with you this Christmas, is that correct? Sean, how am I supposed to deliver all these gifts without my reindeer? Especially Rudolph, he's going to guide the way if it gets too snowy. Okay, but what if the reindeer get inside the house and, and the clarinet's just sitting out on the table, on the bell? I mean, a lot of students like to leave their clarinet sitting on the bell. Oh, they shouldn't be doing that, but you know an excellent thing you can do is pick up one of those K&M clarinet stands. It folds right up inside your clarinet's bell, and they're only about $15, can be found at any local music store. Oh man, I love my K&M clarinet stand. I, in fact, if I was a band teacher, I'd be picking up one of those for every single student. It's, it's one of my pet peeves. I go to a clinic and I see all those clarinets standing up on the ground, and I just worry they're going to fall over. Have you ever seen one of them break? Actually, yeah, I have. Uh, one time I was at a clinic and the girl had her clarinet standing up on its bell and she kicked it over once. I warned her about it. She kicked it over twice. I warned her about it again. And then the third time, it actually snapped completely in half. And, uh, you know, I tell kids that story, but they don't believe me. Oh, it sounds like she might be getting a lump of coal in her clarinet stocking this year. What do you give clarinetists who, uh, who don't deserve a gift? Let's put it that way. Well, I keep a list. One list is naughty, one list is nice, and one list is squeaky. Ha 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 ha, just kidding. No, seriously though, what do you give them? Well, I usually bring out the scale books for those students. They, they tend not to be practicing enough anyways. The scale book that I like to drop off is an infinite number of pages long, and increases in complexity with every single page. Nobody's ever reached the end. Ha ha ha, wow, that sounds like a nightmare of a gift. I'm surprised you can cart that around. It's actually in digital format, so it's kind of a joke because I leave them an iPad, but the only thing installed is this digital ebook that's thousands and thousands, millions of pages long of just scale exercises that just never end. So what do you think the ultimate gift is for clarinet players? I mean, we talked about mouthpiece patches, humidity packs, those all fit inside the stocking. What other things might you want to include for the clarinetist in your life? Well, you know, really the best gift for any clarinetist would be music lessons, and I, I tried to stuff music teachers into the stockings a few years ago, but that didn't go well for a few reasons. Oh, I don't imagine that it would. That seems bizarre. Yeah, you know, the music teachers didn't really like staying in the stockings all night. They found it was a little bit stuffy in there, to say the least. And then, you know what? They also didn't really like coming out on the sleigh with me. That wasn't the most comfortable experience for them either. So, you know, I, I tend to just say, you know, give someone a gift certificate or maybe some cash to get some lessons with at their local teacher, and that'll really help them excel their clarinet career. Almost anyone could benefit from some great lessons with a really great teacher, even if they won't fit inside your stocking. <laughs> that's hilarious. I, I think that that's a good good piece of advice, though, you've got there, Santa. I mean, what better than to better your playing as part of your musical gift this Christmas? So, well, Santa, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Is there anything else you'd like to share with me before we, we wrap up? Maybe some advice on how we can stay on your nice list instead of the naughty list and avoid getting that really long scale book. Well, one thing you can do is put in a little bit of practice every single day, and that'll make your teacher happy too. I say at least 15 minutes here and there is really, really, really helpful. And I, I had a teacher tell me when I was younger that for every day you don't practice, you have to practice two to make up for it. So you can think about that. Taking a week off is really like taking seven days off times seven, which is absolutely crazy. Better just to practice a little bit every day. And you know what? You can get more value out of 15 to 20 minutes of practice every single day than a three-hour marathon session on Sunday afternoons, and that'll also help keep you on my nice list.
Oh, and I almost forgot one more thing. Uh, you know, most people leave milk out for Santa, but I don't imagine that's the best to be blowing into your clarinet. So what should we leave out for you instead? You know, I actually prefer a plate of really good reeds to be left out on the table. And I give them all a try and usually pick my favorite one and take it home with me. I get a great selection that way and varying reeds at different altitudes, which I find gives me the chance to play wherever I am. Do you ever stop to practice while you're delivering gifts? No, I used to do that sometimes, but it's usually really late at night and tends to wake up the kids. They come running downstairs a little early and find me practicing by the Christmas tree, and uh, the parents get a little bit upset about that, so not really. I just wait till Boxing Day. Well, Santa, again, thank you so much for coming on the show, and uh, I wish you a Merry Christmas and good luck delivering all your gifts this Christmas Eve. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Clarinet Podcast. Show notes for this and all other episodes can be found at clarinet.com. While you're there, don't forget to join our email newsletter for free updates, exclusive offers, and a chance to win giveaways. Guests, requests, listener feedback, and comments can be sent to feedback at clarinet.com. Special thank you to our season sponsor, Dario Woodwinds. Don't forget to check out their new show, Don't Blow It, on Instagram, and also try a box of their new reserve clarinet reads next time you're at the music store. The show is also brought to you by Chamber Music Northwest. With over $20,000 in prizes and world-class guest artists and vendors, their upcoming clarinet celebration and competition is an event that you don't want to miss. Learn more at cmnw.org. Clarinet is made possible by listeners just like you. You can support the ongoing production of this independently produced program by donating to our Patreon at clarinet.com support. Supporters get early access to extended ad-free regular podcasts and exclusive access to patron-only episodes and live events. This program was produced and hosted by me, Sean Perrin, in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Music performed by Michael Lowenstern. Debate episodes co-hosted by Andrew Morrow. Audio editing by Brian Chappells. And copy editing by Megan Taylor. That's all for now. Be sure to tune in next time for more of what's new and neat with clarinet with the neatest people in the industry on the Clarinet Podcast.